Lou, and this is Big Lou Barbecue and other things I want to do. And today it's something you want me to do because you requested it in a jambalaya video I did a while back. You wanted to see me make tasso, so it's time for me to make some more tasso. Uh, it's been curing in my fridge for five days, and that's usually the max I've ever cured it for. I got to get it cooked tonight. I had planned to do it a couple days ago when I was off work, but um, had too many honeydew projects and too many other things going on. I couldn't get my grill thrill on that day. So it's now an, actually a Wednesday evening. I was going to do it on Monday. I was actually off work that Monday. Uh, but getting home, it's about a quarter to six in the evening. The sun has just set behind me here. My backyard faces west. But, you know, this will be done around probably 9 p.m. tonight. So, got it out here. Going to put it on my old smoker. Use the snake method. We want to smoke this tasso low and slow. 225 is almost too high. 175 to 225 is a good range. Around 200 to 212, something like that is where I'm shooting for. And I want to get it to about 165 eternal temperature. Internal temperature. I said eternal. Internal temperature. I apologize. Misspoke for a minute. Anyway, uh, you may be wondering what Tasso is if you're not from Louisiana and you go online. Some people call it Tasso ham. I've never actually heard anybody call it Tasso ham. Everybody just calls it Tasso. And it's not ham. It's strips of uh, pork butt meat. And um, you season it. You make it so salty, so spicy, so savory, and somewhat sweet that it's almost unpalatable. Well, why do you want to do that? Well, you use it as a seasoning meat. You cut it up into pieces and you season a pot of greens with it, red beans and rice, good with tasso, jambalaya, gumbo, things like that. Not just Louisiana dishes either. It's starting to catch on in other parts of the country. Um, I love to cook with tasso and love to keep some in my freezer. And anyway, it's um, time to cook some. So it'll probably yield about uh, three packages in the little cryogenic, not cryogenic, um, vacuum seal bags and I'll put them in the freezer and uh, I'll have Tasso when I'm ready to use Tasso. Anyway, you asked to see how I do it. Let me show you how I prepped this on Saturday morning. Now remember, when I prepped this on Saturday morning, I was thinking about cooking it two days later. All right, to make this cure, I'm starting with one ounce of Morton's Tender Quick. Looks like this. It's a curing salt. Some curing salts are pink. This is what I use. It's easy to find. You could use regular kosher salt or something, I guess, if you wanted to. But I like it having the sodium and nitrates and nitrites in there for uh, curing this tasso. So I've got one ounce in here. I'm going to add one ounce of black pepper. Now, somebody talks about my shot glasses, but hey, these are uh, measuring shot glasses. They actually tell me what's one ounce. So I like to use them because they tell me how much it is. There's one ounce of black pepper, one ounce of red pepper. This is cayenne and a Tabasco blend that my dad grew in his garden this summer and I ground up. So uh, that's what I'm using there. And an ounce and a half or three tablespoons of garlic powder. So it was one ounce each of the tender quick, the pepper, the red pepper, and the uh, ounce and a half of garlic powder. To that I'm gonna add half an ounce or one tablespoon of onion powder and one tablespoon of brown sugar. The sugar really does help with the cure. Wanna make sure there's no lumps in there. But we just get it, shake, rattle, and roll. And we've made up our tasso cure. All right, just get it all mixed up and that's what I'm gonna be using to uh, cure the tasso with. As I mentioned in the intro, you want to use pork butt meat or pork shoulder meat. So if you get one from the butt roast, that's best. When you get country style ribs in the store, they may say pork loin country style ribs. That's not what you want. You want to say pork butt or pork shoulder country style ribs. Or you can just buy a whole pork butt or pork shoulder and cut it up yourself. This one right here is not cut in strips like most country style ribs. And when I saw that in the package, I thought that would be good tasso shape right there. So that's good. What I want to do is trim off any of the thick fat. See, there's part of that fat cap from the butt, and that has it too. I want to get that off. A little bit of fat is okay. Um, like this that's right in there. I'll probably just leave that in there. But so, the big pieces, you want to just go ahead and trim off like this. And what you do with it, you can make lard with it or whatever you want to, but... Uh, or you can discard it, but that's not good for the tasso. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim these up and um, we'll get them seasoned. Well, my deepest and honest apologies. I didn't get any footage or video of me actually seasoning the uh, pork meat. 
I, I don't know why, probably operator error. I'm an untrained amateur. I'm not a real YouTuber. I do everything on my iPhone, antiquated iPhone 5 or SE or whatever. It's a little bitty tiny thing. Years old and I either didn't hit the record button or the battery died or I had to run out to the Kodak store and get another 110 cartridge and some flash cubes for this old iPhone. Yeah, that's how old it is. I apologize. All right, anyway. Once you get the fat cut off the meat, hit it with the SWAT team. Yeah, SWAT it. That's equal parts soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and Tabasco sauce. Just make a mixture of soy, Worcestershire, and Tabasco. See SWAT, S-W-A-T, soy, Worcestershire, and Tabasco. I just brushed it on with a little silicone brush on all sides and the edges, and then I sprinkled on that cure mix we made uh, real generously, all right? Uh, and I even kind of pat it in, all right? On both sides and all the edges. Put it in a gallon size Ziploc bag so it lays out flat. Put it in my ice box for several days. I usually do it for three days to five days, sometimes four, but at least three days I like to cure it. And this was five, all right? Anyway, and I turned it over every day. That's what you do. Hit it with the SWAT team, put the cure mix on it, a lot of it, stick it in a bag, put it in an ice box. Hey, sorry I missed the footage. You know, I do this for fun. Well, time for the grill thrill. I got a snake going almost halfway around, but not quite. And I got one of those fast fire starter cubes on there. Man, I really like these. And I found boxes of them with 18 in each one. Yep, a dozen and a half in each one for just a buck each. One dollar, yeah, I bought about five of them. I'm a big spender. Anyway, get the charcoal snake lit. You do want to make sure that you put some wood chips on there. I've got some mesquite and some Tabasco uh, barrel oak wood chips on it. And uh, it made the tasso taste real, real good. Okay, um, Tasso's been sitting in this bag and I have turned it over probably at least once a day, sometimes every 12 hours, since Saturday morning. As I said, it's now Wednesday night. Now, when I cook my Tasso, I use a, a grill pan like this. You don't have to, you can set it right on the grates. But the reason I use a grill pan is because, you know, once I cut that fat off of it, I've got a lot of smaller uh, pieces. So um, I don't want them falling through the grates. Anyway, I'm just gonna uh, lay it out here like this and I'm probably gonna pat it dry and I might sprinkle a little more tasso seasoning on it right before we go on the grill here as the grill gets up to uh, temperature I don't want anything doubled up I want it all flattened out pieces don't have to look pretty because when you use it you cut it up it's a seasoning meat you see something like that could fall through the grates that's why I use a uh, grill pan when I do mine and um, it's just the way I do it it's my baby I spank it you do, do yours how you want to. That's got a little too much fat on it right there, but I'm going to pull it off the, right there because that, that fat doesn't need to be there. Should have got that earlier. All right. There we go. Got rid of that. And just going to let this tasso sit. Going to smoke for a few hours. That piece is got some small pieces to it because that look just looked too big. There we go. Like that. See these little small pieces? I use those too, so that's why I use a grill pan. I don't let anything go to waste because you'll cut it up that small or smaller anyway when you use it as a seasoned meat. All right, so that's ready to go on the uh, smoker. As soon as it's up to temp, I'm gonna take it out and just put it there. Um, I don't need to pat it dry, it looks dry enough, and I don't think I need to add any more seasoning to it. So we're gonna leave it like that and just put it out there. Well, the powers that be didn't want me cooking this tasso this week. Didn't get it done on Monday like I wanted to. Five days later, and I was gonna do it out in the yard, but it started to drizzle. So I moved this in under my patio. Dogs are out here with me. You hear them shaking their collars right now. But it's up to temp. Don't pay any never mind to what this says right now. I had the lid off just a few minutes ago, but it's well above 150 already, or at, right at 150. But it was up just about 200 before I took the lid off a few minutes ago. All right, it's been on about two hours now. And what I'm gonna do is just yeah, the snake is just the past halfway, but still got some coals over on this side, but the leading burning edge is right over there. And it's been operating just about 200. And what I'm gonna do now is just turn this over. Ooh, that was two pieces. Need to separate that. Just turn them over. Just like this, not much to it. And I'm gonna turn
turn my little um, grill pan around. That's why I use the grill pan. Cover it back up. Now that the uh, call end of the charcoal steak is over there, I'm gonna put the vent hole on this side. And let it go just like that till it's about finished. All right, it's now about 10.30. And it's time to check this. I said my intro 160. What I meant was the 150s. But 160s is good, that's 165. You can pull it off at 155 or so, 167. All right, I checked them all, they were done. Time to pull them on in. All right, well here it is in the kitchen on my counter here and what I'm gonna do now, I just brought it in just to take this video. I'm just gonna set it in the oven. It's about 10.30 at night, I'll be up about 5 a.m. I never wanna cut into it till it's calmed down to about room temperature. Um, and remember, it's kinda of like partially cured because I had the curing salt on it, so it's okay. And of course, we slow smoked it at like beef jerky cooking temperatures, you know? Anyway, um, I'll cut it open in the morning and once it's cooled off, showed you what it looks like. We're looking for a pink, curious color to it. Okay, well here it is. It's early the next morning. I went to sleep. But that's how Big Lou makes Tasso. I don't usually make it at night, but the, I had to do it this week. Anyway, I think I want to cut right through that big piece right there. Get, it, it all has that nice reddish brown color to it. And what I'm looking for on the inside is a pinkish color, kind of like a ham or a summer sausage or any other cured meat. And yeah, it's got it. Got a little pinkish color to it. It's not, you know, fully cured. But what I'm gonna do here is just take a slice of this, right like that, and I need to probably cut it this way. We'll scoot over here. I'm gonna take a slice of this one right here. And that's the one we're gonna try. Eat that slice right like this. You don't normally eat it by itself, but we're going to do it. Yeah, it's morning. Coffee pot's just finishing dripping. About 5.15 a.m. I don't normally use the largest slice um, for a taste test. Or slice open the largest piece. But, you know, hey, do anything for the camera. All right, that's perfect. That's why I make my own instead of the grocery store. Hey, my recipe will be down below. The original recipe that I started out with from John Foltz started doing that in my UDS several years ago, but um, I like to just do it on my old smoky. It's just easy with the snake method uh, in that little grill pan. Anyway, um, that's how I make Tasso. I'll have the uh, recipe that, how I modified his recipe down below and the original recipe. And man, that's gonna season up some beans and greens and all kind of things. Jambalaya, stews, gumbos, whatever. I wanna put that Tasso in. But let's put it in some uh, freezer bags. Stick in the freezer. It's ready to go till the next time I need to make some tasso. Hey, thanks for watching the Big Lou Barbecue. You asked for it. You wanted to see how I do it. That's how I do it. I just don't usually do it at night. But oh well. I got it done. Well, sealed it up in the uh, freezer bags. Got about four of them. I weighed them there each about six ounces or so. Not quite half a pound. A little less than half. Quite a bit less than half a pound. But anyway. Four packages of Tasso. It's going in my freezer. It'll keep in your refrigerator for several weeks, and it'll probably keep outside refrigeration for several days. I'm not going to guarantee that. I keep mine in the freezer. Anyway, it's ready to go when I need it. Tasso.